go. So we are being recorded. Um, but today our esteemed alumni expert is Sean Fong of Hawaiian Turfgrass, a farm in Mililani that grows high quality grasses from home lawn, for home lawns, sport fields, and golf courses. Sean graduated from UH in 2006 with his BA in Hawaiian Studies. And then in 2008, he received his BA in Tropical Plant and Soil Sciences with us at SICTAR. Um, I went ahead and sent Sean the questions that many of you had sent in with your registration forms. So he will be starting off with those, but please feel free to add any others in the chat. And we'll also open it up for you to ask questions on camera later if you like as well. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to stop my screen share here and introduce our alumni expert, Sean Fong. Take it away. <laughs> Hello, thanks for uh, inviting me here today. I feel really honored. And um, I guess I can talk grass all day, so let's get to it. <laughs> um, feel free to, to stop or ask questions anytime because I, again, I can talk grass all day so I can fall on tangents. But um, I did receive some of the questions and uh, you know, um, these are great questions, and I guess I'll just go right down the list unless anybody has, I guess, an urgent question. <laughs> but um, okay, so the first question that um, that I have is, what grass recommendations do, would you have in a well, in a full sun area in Eva Beach, preferably a cultivar that has a thin blade and comfortable to walk on? Well, El, El Toro zoysia is a medium blade zoysia grass, and that's the most common, most popular in El, um, in Eva Beach um, because of its drought tolerance, so it's a zoysia grass. Um, we do have a fine blade zoysia, Zeon zoysia, one of our exclusive grasses, which um, is actually what you're um, asking for, fine blade, drought tolerant, barefoot soft, a wow factor appearance. So we're really excited about that, that um, the Xeon and um, when maintained properly, you know, our customers are seeing great results. Sorry. Okay. How do you get rid of nut grass without killing my Japanese grass? My grass is three inches deep. I tried vinegar salt mixture, no good. I tried weed and turf, no good. Okay, well, um, now there's, uh, thankfully there's selective herbicides that we can use. Um, nut grass is one of the worst weeds that we can have in our, in our lawn. However, it's the easiest to treat with selective herbicide. <clears throat> Many people, you know, try to dig it out with, with very little success. Um, when you spray the selective herbicides, the, it's called certainty or sedge hammer or image. There's there's a lot of different products that you could use to target the nut grass and it won't hurt, you know, your lawn, your lawn grasses. So by treating it every one to two weeks, um, you'll be able to take care of take out multiple generations of nut grass fairly fast by using that chemical. And feel free to ask any questions while I'm going down this list. Uh, what ground cover is best for hillsides with sun and shaded and easy to maintain? Well, so we had we have had a lot of success with El Toro zoysia being on hillsides because El Toro zoysia is a zoysia grass. It's fairly aggressive from left to right. You can weed whack it, which you're going to have to do for to maintain it. And it chokes out, you know, it does a really good job choking out weeds, um, drought tolerant. And you look, you can probably go up there once a month to give it a good, you know, hack, so to say, and get it down as, as low as you can with the weed whacker. If you plant other grasses like Bermuda or Seashore Paspalum, um, if you're not um, up to par with the maintenance, then the weeds are just going to just come in and overtake. And eventually you'll have, you know, a mixture of contaminated, you know, weeds and grass. So El Toro would be the, my suggestion, if you have a full sun area, if, if it's shaded, 
then you probably will have to go with St. Augustine, which is a shade tolerant grass. And we have our dwarf uh, St. Augustine Captiva for that. I live in Kaneohe with a hillside that is partial sun and partial shade. So um, what my recommendation is for full sun, as long as you have five hours of direct sunlight, that's considered full sun. Anything below four hours of direct sunlight, then you know I would consider that shade. If you're even thinking about shade, then it's probably a shaded area. You should go with the shade tolerant grass and and that's uh, St. Augustine. All the, all the rest of the grasses, which is um, El Toro, Bermuda, and Paspalum, those are full sun grasses. So, you, and if you plant it in the shaded area, it'll look nice um, at first, but then all the, the weeds will start coming in, the, the grass will start stretching and elongating. And then, you know, eventually you'll have all weeds. So always starting with the right variety from the very beginning is very important. It can save you a lot of time and money. Um, what co are common problems that you encounter regarding homeowner lawns and how do you remedy these problems? So a lot of uh, issues result in lack of maintenance. And if you maintain your grass properly with their proper equipment you shouldn't have you should have very little to no problems people experience problems once um your once lawns get thick and thatchy um and that's a result of not mowing properly so you know uh luckily here in hawaii we're we're semi accustomed to real mowers and so technically all the grasses we recommend real more for Bermuda seashore. It's weekly real mode for Zeon Zoisha and El Toro Zoisha. It's every one to two weeks real mode, but really the more you mow, the nicer the grass is going to be. If you're going to mow once every two to three weeks or once a month, then you should be, or with a rotary, you should be mowing, you should be going with St. Augustine because St. Augustine, grows from two to four inches to six inches and um it can take that you know it'll grow longer but it'll um you don't want to cut it too short when you maintain it but it'll it'll handle that that growth uh once grass is experienced if you don't maintain the zoishas if you don't mow it um you can actually tell who mows and who doesn't mow just by driving down the road because the people that mow with the real their lawns are extremely nice, you know, tight, green. The lawns that are kind of spongy or, or thick, those, those people are most likely don't have a reel. They have a rotary mower, and they're probably not mowing as often as they should. So in the end, it all goes down to okay. the correct variety and maintain. It's all about maintenance. Um, and, and, you know, I can go on and on about real mower and sharpening, but um, in general, if you, the more often you mow, the easier it's going to be the next time you mow. The, the longer you, you mow and the least often, the harder it's going to be because of scalping. Okay, sorry about that. Like that went on a tangent, but let me see. Todd has a question. Uh-huh. Hey there. Hi, Sean. Thanks so much for uh, taking our questions today and, and being willing to give us a, your, your presentation. Um, I'm one of those folks that live out in Neva Beach. And one thing I, I need you to, I wanted to let you know is all the developers out here, my, my, uh, my, um, our installation is about six years old. But all the developers out here, um, typically what they do is they bring in topsoil, put it over a bed of compressed or compacted coral. So what, what I'm seeing is that coral, which equals calcium, is driving up the pH of the soil above it, which makes it difficult for the uptake of nutrients into what we have in our area here is El Toro Zoysia. So um, 
I've got a question, probably you're gonna to get to it later on, but um, it has to do with how, to, how do we, how can we artificially fight mother nature and that, that compacted coral underneath to, to reduce the pH, to allow simple uptake of nutrients, uh, which I, I can tell is impacting. Because uh, I tried an experiment uh, using, believe it or not, drain cleaner, which is like this particular brand of drain cleaner, which is like 95% sulfuric acid. And I mixed a very small amount of sulfuric acid with water and I watered it into the soil. The sulfuric acid reacts with the calcium uh, in the coral and artificially reduce, seems to artificially reduce the pH. And it made a dramatic difference in, in, uh, in the uh, nutrient uptake. I didn't add any other fertilizer and it just, it turned green within like a week or two. Um, yeah, so that's a great point because all the new developments, you know, the soil profile is so little, you know, two to four inches at the max. Um, um, however, so to answer your question, so uh, probably spray fertilize, you know, fertigating, fertigating or even miracle grow, um, adding micronutrients, iron to help all that, uh, I guess, deficiencies um uh, adding some more compost or soil amendment to build up that soil you know that layer of um of soil build the soil up um there's many things that you can do um and, and of course fertilizing um but i would i would try that first you know is um try the miracle grow you'll be surprised uh um and, and that, that works great. Um, and otherwise you wanna fertilize with some kind of turf or lawn or grass fertilizer, wherever you pick up your fertilizer, you know, as, as long as it's um, basically, as long as it says grass or turf, lawn feed, it's fairly good, you know. Um, of course, the the higher the nitrogen, the for, you know NPK, the hydrogen, the nitrogen, the faster <laughs> it's going to grow. Um, so it, it's all about a balance, you know. Um, but if you're trying to green it up, I would I would start with the you know iron um, and the micronutrients, which comes from the the miracle growth to see if that helps any any anymore. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. The uh... I, I would, I'll try that. But the point I was trying to make is that Zoysia won't even allow those nutrients to go be uptaken unless the pH is correct. Mm. And so the calcium or the coral underneath is driving that pH beyond the limit that would allow or promote that uptake of nutrient. So I can spend hundreds of dollars on fertilizer but it's not going to make any difference if the pH isn't right. That, that's a great, um, I, you know, I, I, I am, um, I don't know everything, but that's a great question. And um, for, for that kinds of questions that I can't answer, um, I try to lean on people that are um, experts, such as, you know, maybe Dr. Joe DeFrank or even Ray Ito, which is who he, you know, he works a lot with, Dr. Joe and I lean on Ray a lot, um, and he could probably answer that um, to a better extent than I can. I'm sorry I couldn't answer that, you know, to the yeah, floor. Yeah, Ray, I know Ray, he's the guy that gave me that secret about using the drain cleaner. Then, then I would listen to Ray, whatever. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll get out of your hair. Thanks, Sean. No, no, thank you. Um, yeah, Ray's great. Um, he helps me a lot with a lot of technical things, you know, with pests, uh, at weeds, herbicides. So he's, he's a great guy. Um, so let me see. Please discuss soil pH. Oh, this was your question, probably. Okay. Um, are parasitic nematodes in turf prevalent in Hawaii? So I, I think they are. However, we don't do maintenance. So, and, and we're on the turf farm. So we barely experience that kind of of problems um at, at the worst we're having 
you know, sod webworm insect problems or on seashore paspalum, you know, dollar spot issues if we're not fertilizing properly or overwatering, you know, watching our water uh, um, output. So um, other than that, we, you know, we don't experience that kinds of issues. What is the best kind of ground cover for the slope behind the house? Um, so environment, slightly salty air and dry, just laid El Toro, need to flatten the planting. Yeah, so El Toro is great. It's actually semi-salt tolerant. Um, you know, it, it handles salt fairly well. It, it might turn yellow, but um, it will green back up. <clears throat> We've planted it on beach sides and it's great on hillsides because again, you can't take a mower on the hillside. So you're going to have to have some kind of grass that's going to take, um, you know, the weed whacker. And, and although we don't recommend weed whacking El Toro, you know, that's the only option on a hillside per se. Or you could use a landscape, uh, landscape blade, but... Um, Sorry, can I ask you what what is a landscape blade? So a landscape blade, I uh, learned from Ray. Um, it's it's like a weed whacker, but it's a it's like a circular saw, uh, but the blades go like this. So oh. there's two blades. So it's actually it's considered like a real cut. So a Mariyama landscape blade. So, um, <clears throat> I I. I I, I listen to Ray a lot, but and his recommendation is weed whackers are for weeds. All the all the edges and trimming and for lawns, we should be using landscape blade. And, and we should be, of course, using real mowers rather than rotary mowers. Um, but um, that's just taking it to another level. But um, that's a great tool for anybody to have because it it's like a real scissors cut basically and you can okay. yeah sorry sorry to interrupt so um the hill is it it's pretty much like i i have to sit down uh -huh. cut, you know because it's quite steep and rocky oh. so, so the landscape blade in a or, or, in a in a uh, weed whacker right yeah okay or, you know, what's interesting is technology is so amazing. You know, um, I'm actually trying at my house, it's called an auto mower. So it's a robotic mower. It's a four wheel oh, yeah. drive. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like a, a Roomba in the house. Yeah. You set the, the boundary wire. So you set it per on your hillside uh, and you can wa watch their video. They say it goes on hillsides. So, and it, um, Sometimes it has Wi-Fi um, connective issues, but for the most part, um, I, I'm mowing half of my yard with the reel, and I, I love it. And I'm just trying out the the other half with the 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 auto mower. And what's interesting is, um, I uh, the the mower the auto mower is is it's almost like um, razor blades that spin in a circle. So and it's cutting at at the lowest 0.9 inches so it's one inch um it's it's nicer cut than a rotary because it's a razor blade and the whole idea is the automore is going to go out every couple of days just barely clipping you know rule of thumb one third of a of the blade off at a time but it's barely clipping a, a very little at a time to maintain that look and, and so I put, I switched from Xeon, I've switched from El Toro to Xeon and um, it's looking fairly well. And I'm trying it because I'm interested to see if it'll work for other, you know, homeowners that have Zoisha that don't want to mow. Because, you know, a lot of people, of course, they could hire landscapers, but they could also invest in this mower that potentially could mow their their lawn you know through an app and, and they'll have a fairly nice lawn with no maintenance little to no maintenance so that's what i'm trying and, and you can look into that yeah, what that kind do you use sean which one do you use 
the Husvarna Auto More. Oh, yes. great. That's the one I put in the chat. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's the, and, and they have YouTube videos and it's fairly interesting. And it, like when I did my homework, a lot of the, the sod farmers, they have it at their homes because they're too tired to go out and mow. <laughs> Uh, but um, they have, you know, acres. So this 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 mower could potentially mow, you know, uh, large areas. But we have small areas in in Hawaii. So the cost, you know, got to weigh the cost and the benefit. But it's something to think about, and it's something very interesting. Yeah, technology is is sometimes amazing. Thank you. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> okay. So Sean, sorry, one real quick. Um, Kawaki was wondering, do you use a lot of technology to monitor your production areas, like an EC meter, pH meters, smartphone-based apps? So you know, I started this, you know, out from 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 the 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 classes at TPSS, but but now I try to work with. I believe in technology, so we have an app. Um, and we, we, now we do e-commerce. And so the, the company that, um, so I started licensing grass from them and they, they kind of pivoted towards providing logistics for farms. And, and so they started that and then they started e-commerce where they, they charge percentage. And, and so, so we're part of their program where, we started e-commerce on our website so a customer can go and buy it and it goes directly to the the web you know the cloud into the app and then so it, it tells us the field guys how much to to harvest when to harvest it and then it also goes to the driver you know i can schedule them from the daily and tell them where to go which route to go and, and so everything is and that is, it helps us a lot because before, you know, two years ago, I was texting each order every day. I mean, sometimes multiple texts and it was just getting too much. And so, you know, I, I believe in technology. And, and so that helps us as far as, um, as far as the pH meter and stuff like that, you know, we try not to take it that technical, <laughs> try to keep things simple um, and, and Fortunately, we haven't had that many issues. <coughs> got to, to do that. We, we sometimes we do soil tests to see where the, the compost is at and stuff. But other than that, um, no, no and, and we grow it on plastic. So, you know, our soil profile is half inch to an inch. We're not really trying to build the soil and promote deep roots. We're, we're trying, you know, we're, we're the plastic is for quality, but we're in production. So we're basically trying to, we start over every time by shredding sprigs and you know covering it with compost and growing in the grass and then harvesting it and starting that process all over again. That's the only downside with growing on plastic, but we can control the quality. Um, um, and by pushing it with soil uh, fertilizer, we, we, we again, uh, Ray helped me. Um, he's never been wrong, uh, but he helped me develop a program, uh, triple 20 plus micronutrients. So 20, 20, 20 plus si uh, feature 600 six zero every two weeks. Um, and, and, you know, I've tried multiple fertilizers um, we've tried this nanotechnology, you know, very two quarts per acre. I bought into it. Um, however, I think it didn't work for us because we're not, again, we're, we're growing on plastic. So we're not promoting and uh, we're not trying to build the soil because, you know, we just try to promote fast root growth to, to fill in the grass. So, um, I, I went through cycles, you know, we, we did a lot of granular before it was hundred percent granular hydro pro uh, 21714. And um, that might be a great for growing for plugs because um, it dissolves in water and it's instantly uptake uptaken by the plant um, rather than uh, let's just say like a Scott's turf blend. It's a slow release. 
um, which takes time to break down. So the so in production, we want fast release fertilizer. So we, we transition from granular to foliar. So now we have boom sprayers and that goes on on each bed and we're, we're constantly fertilizing at low rates um, to promote plant growth um, via the fertilizer. So, and, and we can control how fast and how much fertilizer and how much we wanna push and how fast we can push by the fertilizer. And, and we found that for grass growth, N, P and K is what we need to uh, for for fast grass growth high amount you know triple 20. um sean another question came in if um uh, -huh. uh harvey wanted to know if, uh is it true that if the grass so the grass height and the root growth make a difference if you cut the height too low the root growth will shorten is that true well it's all of you know in, in my opinion, it's all about keeping your grass main, manageable. Um, if you maintain it properly, you won't have thatch. Thatch is a result of, you know, lack of maintenance. As the grass keeps growing thicker and thicker and thicker, the dead organic, you know, root zone is getting uh, thicker. So ideally, you want to cut it all the way down. So I like to compare it to a haircut you know a, a two inch haircut if your grass is two inches you need to cut it all the way down you need to bolo head it start fresh and then once you're gonna you're gonna scalp it basically it's gonna look horrible um you might want to verticut it and aerate it at that time but basic you know you need to get it down to manageable posit to manageable start and that's by taking it all the way down once you get it down it's about maintaining uh uh, mowing at a manageable and maintaining that consistency of mowing. So every one to two weeks, because the thatch is again, a result of lack of maintenance, lack of mowing. I hope I answered that question. <laughs> Harvey pipe in if, if not. Um, but uh, Todd was also asking it about any thoughts about my Lord my lorganite, M I L O R G A N I T E. I'm not sure what that is. Todd, I, I, I'm sure I butchered that all up. But. Yeah, it, it's called melorganite. And um, it's, believe it or not, it, it comes from, I think, Wisconsin. Uh -huh. And it's a, uh, a product of w uh, wastewater treatment. And, um, you know, there's no, there's no bad smell associated with it, there is a smell that comes with it, but it's just kind of strange not, but it ha it's a slow release and it has um, slight amount of nutrient, but uh, some good nitrogen. Um, you know, I, I get it, uh, Sean, that you need uh, high NPK levels to promote growth, but homeowners gotta be careful because you're gonna end up cutting your grass twice a week in the summertime at least. I mean, I've seen it over here where people, you know, they're all about fertilizing their lawns and, they, and they, they're, they're following uh, that triple 20 regimen along with some feature, which is uh, iron. And then they get this onslaught of growth and they can't keep up with it. And that's, that's what kind of leads to maintenance problems. But um, you're dead on with respect to thatch. I had to really wrestle with our HOA here to finally, uh, and it was only because I'm, you know, I'm part of the Master Gardener program that I was able to show them the UH information paper that talks about thatch maintenance. And so we spent probably close to $11,000 because we have 888 homes around here to go through the dethatching de pro process and, uh, you know, we got some complaints because it does look bad uh, when they, they cut it real low at first, ball ahead, as you say. But um, after that, it grows in very nicely and we're getting a lot less uh, disease, a lot yeah. less insects, and uh, people aren't breaking their ankles because it's so deep. <clears throat> And, and, and a lot of issues with disease, insects, and pests is re result because of thatch. 
and, and like in Mililani right now, we're heading into, uh, you know, we're heading into winter. Um, a lot of the lawns are yellow and spotty. So dollar spot and, and lack of fertilizer. So to, to go back to what you started saying, we, we just started using this product. I'm, I'm not even sure what it's called. It, it's, 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 it's a, it's what you're talking about, probably. It's a human waste end product from the city, uh, from Cinegro, who I guess does whatever they do, but they turn the waste into these pellets. So we, we've been actually, um, they've been coming to our farm on a steady basis and bringing, you know, uh, loads of it and, and it, it is it is it is very stink <laughs> however so when they bring it we we need to mix it one-to-one -one, you know with compost right away because just yesterday i was driving they dumped two piles and it was sitting there for you know one or two days and it was it was smoking so it gets hot but as, as soon as you mix it you know it cools down but the reason why we use it is because and I should probably get it soil tested, uh, you know, once we mix it with the compost, but the grass, I, I can see the benefits of the grass, the growing, it's the grass is greener, it's growing in faster. And, and, and that's what, you know, we're all about. And, and so like yesterday, I shouldn't laugh, but it, it, it's very stink, you know, um, the guys, we have to top dress because when, when it rains, you know, we, anytime we see plastic, we need to go on top dress to fill in those. And, and the crew was getting the compost from the, the far pile up in the next field. And I, was, and I asked them, why are you guys doing that? Because they don't want to use, you know, the ones that that's mixed. And, and I can respect that. Um, but, but, but we put that down when we first plant. So when we spread the sprigs, and when we need to cover it, that's the time when we put it in. And, and we've only been using it for maybe three months, but I've been seeing the benefit because anything that can reduce cost, fertilizer, you know, cost, I'm all about. As long as it uh, works, um, I'm not. I'm not afraid of spending money on fertilizer because I, I I believe in you know if it works, we're we're doing it um, because. For instance, um, I believe in weed management pr using pre-emergent rather than post-emergent, because if you let the weeds grow in, you're gonna spend, you know, labor, time, chemicals. So we were we had a, a lot of issues with weed uh, problems. You know, I was spending a lot in labor, four guys, you know, a day, and once they weeded it, it would come right back. So we started using, you know, Ronstar Flow pre-emer, you know, it's a pre-emergent but uh, soluble, and boom, spraying it on our fields, and that helped us create uh, or or manage our weeds. It should it should be zero weeds now, and so I tell the guys if I can see weeds on the fields, that means you missed the spraying. <laughs> there should be no weeds. So using knowing the proper chemicals knowing which times to spray these chemicals or fertilizer is, is very important um during the growing oh, okay so um and, and to, to to go go on what type of fertilizer for homes yeah so if you use a high amounts of np and k you, your grass is going to grow fast that's why you know, the green doctor, Ray Ito, suggests use low amounts of micronutrients. So fertilizers that instead are uh, higher higher in number, that are lower in number, um, MP and K, low numbers, but have micronutrients and or iron. Um, and then, of course, every now and then you're going to have to promote growth, triple 20, but just be ready for the growth and do the proper maintenance, <clears throat> excuse me. So, you know, the next question was type of fertilizer, fertilizer granular to promote growth of plugs. Um, and, and so for when we were, you know, we hardly do plugs, if any, um, but for plugs, we recommend the HydroPro, uh, Yara product 21714. And 
the reason why again is because it's solid water soluble so the plants uptake it right away rather than you know, like a, a slow release triple 16, which has a potential of burning. And that, that, that was another issue of the, the hydro pearl, excuse me, doesn't burn if you, if you use it properly. So we recommend that. And you can, of course, follow the label, but uh, you can use it properly, you know, uh, fairly often at low amounts with the whirly bird to help promote growth. <clears throat> and of course, water and sunlight is, you know, the grass best friend. Most economical irrigation watering pattern. So, uh, you know, I was uh, refer, you know, taught um, of, there's four inch pop-ups, but now there's the MP rotors. Uh, you know, there's very efficient patterns that kind of beam out and, you know, like going like this. So it cuts through wind. Um, very little uh, drift and you can adjust. So when we install irrigations, we we actually use 100% MP rotor heads because um, you know it, it saves water, it's more efficient. And um, you know, uh, again, I believe in technology and passing that on to our customers because we just want our customers to succeed in the end or everybody to succeed. Best way to keep weeds under control while grass is growing in. So it, it's very hard because uh, on the farm, we can use pre-emergent. In residence, you can't use pre-emergent in turf. You can use like, for example, Ronstar G. You, you're not supposed to use it in, in plugged areas. You can use Ronstar G in planter areas but it's not labeled for turf. So that it, it's kind of hard. So then the only way is, and that's why we recommend sod. The only way is to go over there and, and that's where the labor comes in, you know, um, and, and physically hand remove and or post emergent spray. Um, you know, uh, there's many broadleaf selective broadleaf weed killer you know you're going to you're going to target your your nut grass of course that's going to come up but the grassy weeds you're going to the 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 more earlier you can go in and and remove them before it sets seed the 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 uh, easier it's going to be for you because once it sets seed it's going to be a never ending headache and and that's why we recommend sod again if you factor in the time, the pay, you know, the labor, the water bill, the sewer bill, uh, the quality of the grass at the end of the growing four to six months, you, you know, sod might be an option. But if you have the time and the patience, plugs is definitely um, an option. Uh, and of course, you know, depending, you know, we're very fortunate in Hawaii, we, we have a, a, a year round growing season. However, it does grow grass does grow faster in spring and summer we're, we're 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 heading towards our winter time so it does grow fairly slower um but you know so you could plant more plugs more uh more material closer together so for plugs i recommend two inch plugs planted four to six inches apart so small plugs planted close together rather than big plugs planted far apart and the whole theory is the smaller the plug, the more surface area the root can, can grow from the size of the grass. And the closer you plant the plug, the faster it's gonna fill in. There's many ways to skin a cat, so, but that's just how you know, we uh, had the most success. When to make the first cut. So uh, for the plugs, you, know, you, you probably want to wait until you start to see growth, lateral growth, because, and you need to be careful because if you run the rotary more or any rotary more or any more, you could rip out the plug uh, before it fully roots. So it, it's kind of a balance. You're probably looking at month two or three, but the grass will grow up and then it'll, it'll start to grow this way. Once you can mow or cut the grass, you're gonna see grass start growing sideways or laterally, which is what you want because the faster it can grow laterally, the faster it's gonna fill in. Um, so uh, 
you want to try to you limit the grass from growing up and, and, and try to keep it at a low low height of cut so as far as mowing you know like the, the new developments you know they do a great job with let's just say common area they're going to plug it and they're going to be over there watering it you know three to four times a day because the more sun the more water the faster it's going to grow they're over there fertilizing and they're over there you know walking through and weeding you know at least once a month once every two months um and then once el toro uh, you're, you're not going to see any growth for the first couple of months but once it takes it's gonna you know click and it's just gonna fill in really fast so for el toro depending on the season you know three to six months plus and of course you know again real more if you can uh weed whacker is, is okay um but the idea is for el toro to keep it low the lower it is the nicer it's going to be and the less thatch it's going to have ideally you want to cut it with the reel at three quarters of an inch or below so one inch or below anything above one inch you're you're, you're kind of borderline um because it can grow really fast to two or three inches so uh, you can get it you know and el toro is really great because you can get it in check really fast you know if, if it does get thick on you you know scalp it down and then you know maintain and manage the mowing if if you don't have water you know it, it'll it'll dry up but then when it does rain it bounces right back you know so and that's the zoisha in, in, zoisha quality in el toro which makes it so successful for homes we, uh, you know low maintenance little insect and disease issues drought tolerant chokes out weeds that's the zoisha and and so um, if, if you can maintain el toro you know, the, now there's newer varieties. Uh, in my opinion, the finer the blade, the nicer the grass is potentially. Xeon is finer blade. Um, and, and so that's the difference is Xeon is fine blade, El Toro is medium blade. All of our grasses are great and they all boil down to maintenance, you know, um, preferably with the reel, you know, scissors cut rather than, you know, tearing with a rotary. Any other issues that often come up? So again, it, it basically, it all boils down to maintenance. If you can mow it every one to two weeks, you're, you're going to be in the safe zone. If you're mowing, you know, once a month or two, you're going to be open to uh, issues, you know, thatch, insect, disease, and, <clears throat> and the, the, and like when, I mowed my lawn today with the reel. It takes me five, less than five minutes. If you mow it properly, you know, and consistently, it's easy. When you when you mow it once a month, then your mower gets stuck and scalped, and then it, it, you know the lawn. So it, it takes two to three times as long to mow it. So just like uh, a haircut, it's all about maintenance. It's all about maintenance. I, I think that's the the questions. Does anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, uh, Sean actually got another one. Um, if, if, have you ever had anyone or invited anyone to run experimental turf research on a portion of your production area besides the new fertilizer? <coughs> um, well, Dr. Chang, on, on, um, shoots, on our farm, I'm not sure. Uh, nothing comes to mind um but we're always open to see you know what we can do um how we can because i'm always open to see how we can better our production uh open to technology um, and education so uh, we never done it but that, not saying that we would never do it yeah Hey, hey, Sean, I'll just throw out there at the Urban Garden Center. I, I think I mentioned this to you a couple of years ago when I first met you, but we, we have a turf grass display plot that is, you know, the, the hardscape has been installed already, and I believe there's a foundation for irrigation, but we don't have any turf in there yet. And, and when we talked, uh, just to remind you, you had said that, yeah, you'd be interested in 
in, in working with us to help develop that. But um, I haven't seen any movement from Urban Garden, but uh, I'm gonna be talking um, with the folks over there and see if we can't get, get it going. Yeah, let me know. We're def uh, that would be um, we would be love to partner with them and you know provide the grass to so they can help us educate and promote you know, but it's all about educating. Um, the more we market uh, and the the more uh, the our customers or anybody finds out about these new grasses, uh, they're they're definitely interested because El Toro is is king of the hill. You know it. It's our most popular grass. It's the, the most acreage we grow. But but now there's there's different varieties, you know. Um, it, I'd like to think, like, we're almost like a carpet store. There's just different grades of grasses. All of our, car, you know, grasses are great. It, um, it's just, what do you want? <laughs> you know, we have the good, the better, and the best. Um, so, and then it all boils down to maintenance. Um, so it, it, it's getting really interesting and really fun as our company grows and as you know these newer varieties have rolled out um you know i'm not just talking about it and promoting we can actually sell it now so it's a, it's a little bit more fun um and as we've planted out our our, our acreage at, in mililani you know it's all about fine-tuning the company now um you know uh making it try to streamline it so try to have standard operating procedures so then that that way you know uh, of course i started it a, a lot of the guys are family and people that started with us um from 2000 and and and, and eight so um but as we grow you know i'm not going to be there all the time and, and so um, I'm, I'm, I'm always open to work with other professionals that are going to help me make my job easier. Um, payroll, accounting, you know, lawyers, whatever it is, because in the end, if I could just focus on grass and, and, and selling the grass, that, that would be great. <laughs> I, I have a question. Uh -huh. um, so this real mower it makes it easier, you say, so that maybe a 15 year old boy might be more excited about mowing <laughs> well, well, it's funny because I, I just um, maybe a few months ago, I, 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 re I planted Xeon and now it's almost like a pride thing. You know, I, I enjoy cutting the grass. Um, we brought I brought one of the mowers from the farm that we got from an old golf course. So we have the proper greens mower. And it's all about, you know, keeping your blades sharp. And, and um, so uh, it can be fun, um, it, definitely. Uh, it can be a chore. I could see that. Um, so it, it depends on the outlook. And, and but, but yes, the real more preferably would be the scissors cut would be the nicest. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, hey, Jesse, let me... I got to give you the ground truth on this, okay? I share Sean's enthusiasm with cutting it. You know, I take pride in my grass. I have a real mower, but you need to understand that there's a maintenance tail to a real mower. It's like scissors. They get dull and you have to have them sharpened. That's not, you know, it can get expensive. I have, I think um, Ray comes over and sharpens a group of uh, homeowners where I live. I kind of got a hooey going I get about five or seven mowers owners that bring their mowers over to my garage and he goes through and he sharpens all of them and he gives us a pretty good price but still it is a maintenance tail it's something you've got to take care of or else you're not going to get the right cut but what happens is I get people walking by my house and the first question they ask is hey what kind of fertilizer are you? your lawn looks so nice how come what kind of fertilizer you use and I try to say hey it's it's not just the fertilizer, it's the cut and it's the, the time you spend on it. So, yeah. you know, it can get pretty involved, but yeah, and, I enjoy it. Yeah, um, of course, the nicer lawns are the, the ones that they either have a landscaper mowing properly or they take pride, you know, and they're, they're mowing sometimes more than once a week, you know, but it's all about maintenance, going out there and, and keep trying to keep it under an inch. If you can keep it under an inch, it's going to be fairly nice, top shape. Yeah, that's right. And then 
one thing that I, I've got to I got to mention to you is my practice is a benefit of mowing it with a real mower and mowing it more often is I never put a grass catcher on. When I mow my grass, the 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 grass just goes all over the place and and that serves as a uh, one application of fertilizer because that grass is so small it breaks down into composted uh, material pretty quick and so i never pick it up and i never have to dump it in the, the green waste yeah um I, I i know we talked to ray you you must talk to ray because yeah i follow this you know he recommended the same thing and you'll notice that people that do collect the clippings what they what, there's no nothing wrong with that but then you're gonna have to fertilize more supplement more with with you know fertilizer the food the clippings will help it acts as a natural or organic fertilizer when it breaks down and it's 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 just visually you know um it can get visual for a day or so but then the sun breaks it down and then you know it's barely noticeable and and so yes less fertilizer so yeah i would just if you have that relationship with Ray, uh, he's a great guy because uh, um, he has never been wrong. You know, he's helped me with identifying things, and uh, he 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 is the true professional, yeah, or expert of turf grass. Yeah. Um, there was um, Melly was asking if does UH offer soil testing, and I was gonna just tell her. Yes, ADSC, um, Agricultural Diagnostic Service Center does. And yes, Kauai, they're open. They were closed for a little uh, while and they did reopen. So I'm going to put that in the chat. Here. And what's, what's interesting about technology is now there's soil tests that can DNA profile um, all these different, you know, fungus and uh, uh, fertilizer and they can tell you what you're lacking in, you know, a soil test, but, um, you know, uh, technology and, and leaning on um, you, the proper tools can help diagnose problems much faster, you know, um, yeah. So if you're, you know, the, the proper way to install is you're supposed to start with the soil tests because the soil tests will will tell you what your soil is deficient and then you you build upon that um so that and then what's interesting is we had a customer that had problems with their lawn um you know we installed the saint augustine in the shaded area and their lawn went it it, it went it was nice the landscaper came and scalped it with the real uh, with the the uh, weed whacker, so it went from beautiful to bald, and then the grass died, and then of course the customer calls us up and and we're, you know we're 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 panicky oh no you know it's a lot of investment, and of course I call Ray Ito the green doctor um, he recommended get a soil test, and come to find out it was the uh, so it was the the pathogens or it was a fungus in the soil that caused the rooting to, the uh, the roots to rot. So you know of course we we replaced it and Ray had his have um, the customer of course hired Ray to um, do a fungicide program preventative to prevent that from even happening. So it's really about knowing if you can identify the problem and know what how to treat it that's gonna uh save a lot of time and effort and and, and really make your grass the, the healthiest okay one last quick question um what's the turnaround time from sowing sod plugs to harvest uh so for plugs um in residence, I would think it depends on the grass variety, but El Toro, you're probably looking at, you know, three to six months. Of course, the more you water, you don't want to flood it. You just want to keep it moist and not let it dry out. And also, the, uh, so for plugs, we recommend 10 to 20% material. So if your uh, lawn is a thousand square feet, 
you would get 100 to 200 square foot of grass, cut that up into, you know, two inch plugs and plant it out e evenly. And then you're, you know, uh, watering probably three to four times a day uh, sporadically to keep it moist and promote growth. <laughs> All righty. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Does anybody have any, um, any <laughs> more questions for Sean? That was a lot of information for me. <laughs> I'm so new with this. I'm like, oh, I can remember. So I'm going to be putting plugs in. I'm going to do it tomorrow. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So a uh, lot of great information. I'm so happy. You mentioned something about that Hydro Pro solution. So that's the li right. Well, Did I say it right? Hydro Pro is a granular. Oh, granular. They, so they, yeah. They sell it in 50 pound um uh, bags and you know that might be too much but you can get that from bei B on limits brewer or uh, simplot or nutrient those are the fertilizer company uh -huh. um, but you know i i normally just suggest you know the scott southern turf blend uh yeah. is a really good fertilizer and then you could supplement that with miracle grow you know to 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 make it grow fast faster Oh, okay. So because I have the, I bought the turf one from Home Depot or something. And then okay. yeah, you, then uh, you started mentioning this, that it's a soluble fertilizer would be better because it would help them to, the grass to absorb it faster. I want it to grow as fast as it can because I bought the weeds. I don't want them have well, to keep pulling can, weeds. You can't force feed it, but I, I would yeah. think whatever you got, must, you know, that should be good enough. Okay. Uh, just follow the label and don't overdo it. Uh, I would think spoon feed, you know, less but more frequently would benefit the grass okay. rather than, you know, yeah. more, at, at, you know, one time, just a big shot. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Got lots of pointers. Uh, okay. Have fun and good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, it's low. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to um, go ahead and um, I'm going to put an evaluation in the uh, chat. So if you don't mind taking a minute to fill that out, that just helps us um, get better, you know, the best programming for you guys, what figure out what you guys want. Um, thank you, uh, Sean, for for uh, coming out this evening and answering everybody's questions and um, being an amazing resource for us for CTAR. And um, the Alumni Association would like to thank you very much as well. Um, we'd love to see you pop up anytime if you if you uh, you feel like dropping in and saying hi, We're, we meet once a month. Um, so feel free to do that as well. And uh, thank you everyone for coming and um, enjoying the evening. Thanks everybody. It was an honor. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Nice to see you, Sean. Bye. Nice to see you, Dr. Kent. Yeah. Take care. Great job. Enjoyed Thanks, it. Everybody. Thank, Thank you. you Jessica. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.